Hello there. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is the subject of this lesson, and it's a bird done with the Montmartre watercolour travel set. Before we get into the lesson, if you love art, then check out the other lessons at our webpage at www.montmartre.net because we have literally hundreds of them there, as well as links to our Facebook, Instagram, and our art club, The Creative Connection. At the start of most painting projects, one needs to create an outline. And I do this any number of ways. For this project, I'm drawing the outline in fine tip marker on a Montmartre drafting table. This is a new product and at the time of making this lesson is not yet available at retail, but it will be very shortly. Anyway, it's fantastic. It's fully adjustable, has this great storage area for pens and brushes, features these neat drawers and has a glass top. And at this angle, the table offers a much more ergonomic surface to work on. So I've drawn in the bird, I'll scan this and attach it to the PDF. These are to A4 sizing, but I'll be using an A3 sheet from a Montmartre 300 GSM watercolour pad. I shade the back side of the PDF with a 6B pencil. I open up the pad, take the PDF image into position, and using a 2H pencil, I retrace all of the elements in. I then gently remove the image sheet and we can apply the paint. Because I want the background to be fairly soft, I cover the area to be painted with a layer of water from a number four mop brush. Wetting the paper minimizes any hard edges of paint. Just ensure you only apply water to the background. The colors I'm using are purple to crimson to orange to yellow. So after a watery mix of purple is dropped in, I drop in some crimson and let it naturally blend with the purple. I move quite quickly so the colors have time to mingle and slowly dry carefully cut in around the negative space and leave an area free of colour for the orange. Dip the mop brush into the water and charge it with orange and apply it next to the red. Again, let it mingle by itself. You may have to give it a hand by lifting the painting so the tones flow into one another. Just try not to over blend the colours or they can become dead looking. The final tone is brilliant yellow. Lay this up to the orange. Once you're happy with the coat, let it dry naturally. Whilst the background is drying, take another printout and profile cut the bird and the branch out with scissors. This will be a mask for the next step. I have cut the beak off and cut inside the body too. Next, using the blue tack, apply the mask to the sheet. For certain fiddly areas, such as the beak and legs, I use only blue tack. This actually works quite well as the blue tack bonds well to the paper. The drop mask here is a simple alternative to masking fluid. And in this case, it will be fine as we only want to stop the flex of paint. Masking fluid has a very short shelf life too, but for this purpose, it will be perfect. For the flecking, I use a large hog bristle brush for oil painting. Dip it into the paint and flick the bristles with the finger. I approximately lay purple over the purple, red over the red, orange over the orange, and yellow over yellow. There is obviously a little overlap, but this is fine. The whole idea with the flecks is to add a busy interest. I will say at this point also, that if you are completing this step, ensure that you take precautions to protect any surfaces from the flecks. This is only watercolour, but it can still be annoying to have to remove it from where it shouldn't be. Once you're happy with all the flecks, let them dry and gently remove the mask. If the blue tack sticks to the paper, rub it with another piece of blue tack and it will come straight off. Ensure there is no little stray bits that have not come off cleanly, as they will repel the next coat on the bird. This next coat is essentially handled much like the background inasmuch as the area is dampened and the colours are dropped into the wet base. I start with a yellow green and drop it mainly into the head area with a touch on the breast and base of the tail. I then mix in some green 
into the middle area followed by some straight turquoise into the tummy area. I'll let all of these tones infuse with each other and meld together naturally. One of the reasons the greens of the bird works with the red of the background is that they are companion colours of each other. It's kind of nice too that the paint decides where it wants to go to a degree. We just have to help it along. I paint the branch our bird is perched on with yellow ochre. I want to suggest the branch is cylindrical. So after I lay in the yellow ochre, I lay some burnt umber into the underside of it whilst it's still wet. Although this project is pretty loose in its handling, I think the eyes always carry great weight. So I spend a little time in detailing. I start by laying in some burnt umber into the iris. I then create a light grey and start building up the shape of the beak. I keep it fairly simple and just define the important areas. I like to lay in the light tones first and build up the shape. Black is the last tone to lay down and once you're happy with how the beak and eye looks, you can lay black into the legs. Again, work from light to dark. For all the twigs in the background, I'll be using a rigger from the Detail and Liner set. I'll also be using a liner from the Gallery Series brush set. See you next time!